when did you get into martial arts in general? Like what, what started you in martial arts and how old were you? Um, well, my first pro fight was earlier, actually, because I was seven and two when I got to the UFC. But I started martial arts back in 2001, I want to say. Mm-hmm. And I maybe I might have been 16 and uh, I was being bullied. I was fresh off the boat from Jamaica. And it's just a, it's a culture shock, especially in New York. I don't know if you've been in New York, but New York is like one of the capitals of assholeism. Boston <laughs> is like right there. You want to meet a legitimate <laughs> asshole, go to Boston. Yeah. But the secondary assholes are in New York. I'm a former asshole, so I can say it. Yeah. But um, yeah, it was it was New York, and I was being bullied. My mom wanted me to build my confidence. I was cutting classes, and because um, in Jamaica, I never got bullied. We didn't even wear shoes. I didn't even know what racism was until I got to America. Oh, wow. So it was a lot of these things that was happening, and I was young. I'm 13, you know, so I'm at that age. And my father wasn't here, so I didn't have that father figure. I later found that in martial arts and other instructors. You know, people became my father figures. So when the bullying got out of hand and I ended up almost wanting to take my life, I even had an episode where I got bullied on a a school bus, and I got to be real with you, I – contemplating thoughts of going back to school and ended that kid's life and many others. You know, I was, yeah. I remember getting off a bus saying, I'm going to try to find a gun at 15 years old. I'm thinking wow. this, you know, like, and, and you hear kids that are doing this at even younger age than me. And you hear kids that are taking their lives. I was there, man. I wanted to take my life. I went on my roof a bunch of times, man. I, I remember I was looking for a weapon but I couldn't find one. I was asking people and they're like, what the fuck are you asking for that for? You know? Mm-hmm. And because Monday come, I was like, I'm going I'm to do something. And thank God I didn't. Yeah. So now, you know, my buddy, R.J. Cooper, he, he does a lot of um, uh, motivational speeches, you know, but kids, he, he, he works with kids. He was on the first uh, black rowing team for Chicago, which, you know, usually is an all white thing. So yeah, it's a great story. It's a story on um, Amazon. It's called a, a most beautiful thing. Yeah. And it's a story about how they came up in Chicago, man. If you ever get a chance, check that out. All right. So, you know, whenever he's in town, he's my best bud. He's like, hey, man, I got this speaking gig at school. We'd love to have you. And I go to these schools, man. I work with these kids. You know, I tell them about staying in shape, the importance of that. And I tell them that, hey, I wish I was, I wish I had someone to come to school to tell me it's going to be okay. Yeah. That there's life after this. There's taxes. There's getting a job. There's having you know kids or whatever. There's there's, yeah. there's like there's another life after that. Yeah. But a lot of kids they don't know that they feel stuck, and I felt stuck there. Yeah. And um, I'm just I, I'm glad I have the opportunity to go there and talk to these kids and be a part of that in any way I can. Real quick, real quick, real quick with Mike Swig. <laughs>